Hello, Dreams and Service is here. Today we have the screen of a printer that we are going to be working on today. This screen is blank. The printer comes on normally, but nothing displays on the screen. The touch doesn't work, and there is no form of light that appears on any part of the screen. So today I'll show you how to to fix this particular issue. So with this screwdriver, I've been able to take out all the screws on it. Sometimes yours might come with um, screws that will be needed now in case. So you just get ready. I've been able to lose out all the screws on this particular um, screen, and you can see this is the board. Of it I'll show you how to service all this board so that the, the screen can come on again so on the board of this screen we have several cables and flex cables that are attached to the board and most of the time there's just short side cuts in the board which I'm going to show you how to test with a multimeter if you have a multimeter and if you don't if you don't have a multimeter I'll show you an alternative you can use to be able to check for continuity on this particular board and then for the flex i'm going to remove the flex and i'm going to scrape it this is this is one of the first thing you need to do sometimes dust carbon dust can build up on the flex and then it is going to block the contact which will make it impossible for power to be able to go into the screen so i'm going to get the flat screwdriver or any flat tool then i'll gently scrape the metal part of the flex scrape it evenly and gently not too hard so as not to cut the flex in any way you can see the way i'm doing it i'm doing it as careful as possible in order not to damage any part of this flex this flex are important and then this um the screen of printers like this they are a bit scarce and you can hardly find them some you can't even find it online when you go online you can only get it from maybe second hand or used printer see if you have it packed up somewhere or someone that is willing to sell so i'm going to clip this particular flex back into the board and then put it back then i'll go to all the cables one by one unplug them and plug it back again sometime it might just be that the touch removing them and putting them back again into their ports can fix the issue you can see the way i'm doing it push it back gently pushing the cables back inside in just like I'm doing right now and then push everything back in and the reason for this is because if this problem is as a result of partial contact in any way by pushing it back in you'll have been able to restore that partial touch and then you'll have been able to restore back uh, power to it so this is the other cable i'm plugging it back in right now so you can see just make sure you check all the cables on it we have several cables some going to the screen some going to the torch and some going to the buttons we have several buttons on some of the screen if yours doesn't have a button it doesn't matter just touch all the cables just like i'm doing right now okay take your time and you have to be very very careful in order not to damage any of any of the 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 tiny component on this board you can see a whole lot of tiny component there you have to be very careful so as not to break any of them so i'm going to plug everything back in right now so then i'll check this other cable make sure you set everything well Okay, I'm plugging this this one back okay so I'm going to test for continuity for these cables you just check the cable you see tiny piece of metal that is exposed take your multimeter and check for continuity and if you don't have a multimeter I'm going to make use of this small fan this small fan you can get it from desktop computers or laptops they are 12 volts regulated fan so i'm going to plug it in and to check if there is continuity and if you have voltage that is smaller than 12 volt that is not up to 12 volt it can also get the fan to spin spin that way you know that power is coming to to the screen 
and then you'll be able to diagnose it and check if the problem is from the logic board or the problem is from the screen so you can see i'm using the fan to check for power there is no form of power coming into this board i'm going to check each of the cables one by one look for the part of the the cable you are working on that is exposed some of them have if you twist the back of the cable you see the metal parts that is exposed so just get a positive and a negative of the fan that you're using and carefully place it on the positive or negative part of the cables that you're working on and then check if the fan will spin in any way and you only use this i i i'm only showing you this if you don't have a multimeter but ideally you're supposed to have a multimeter to be able to test the voltage that is coming into the board you can see i have my multimeter also but i'm just using this for engineers that couldn't get hold of a multimeter at hand readily so this particular board i push everything in and i've tried to check for continuity continuity is intact i try to check for for voltage and then so far i've not been able to read any voltage coming into the board from the main logic board which means the problem has to do with the board sometimes the logic board might be the issue because the screen is taking power from the logic board so if the logic board is bad the screen won't be able to turn on so right now i'll go back and check the board i put on the printer normally and check if the board runs normally. Normally there is a fan on the board. If the board runs normally, the fan is supposed to spin. Because the fan that is attached to the logic board takes power from the logic board itself. So if the fan doesn't spin, then you know that the board is bad. Something is wrong with the board. That is one way to test it. Sometimes your board may not have a fan that you can use to test. That is where... Uh, that is where the multimeter comes in. You set your multimeter and then you check the